Chapter 6 The next morning, Melody felt like she was glowing. Every time she caught sight of Jacob, she thought about how he'd kissed her and touched her the night before. None of his touches had truly been intimate, but they felt as if they had been all the same. As she made breakfast, she realized that her feet were now hurting very little. She was almost certain Fiona would let her skip the ointment and bandages. As the men came in from their chores, Melody put breakfast on the table. Good morning, she called pleasantly. To her surprise, Jacob walked to her and kissed her very casually, as if it was something he did every morning. It didn't seem to faze Bastion even a little, so she continued with what she was doing. After breakfast, she washed the dishes as the men headed to work. It wasn't long before she heard the sound of a wagon. Fiona, Henri, and Emma jumped down and hurried into the cabin. What's our big project today? Emma asked. I want to get the floors and walls scrubbed. This house needs a good fall cleaning before Jacob and I move to the big house. Have you seen inside yet? Henri asked. I haven't. Have you? Henri nodded. I helped Pa design the house, and I made sure I had him put in a kitchen any woman would be proud of. Is it close to ready? Melody asked. Emma nodded. But we're not supposed to tell you. How close? Melody asked. Before the week is out, Fiona said, sounding as excited about the whole thing as Melody felt. I know he said there would be a real stove. I'm very excited about that. All three girls nodded. I'll get started on sweeping, Fiona said. You sit with Henri. She nodded to Melody as she said the last words. I don't think I need to. My feet are so much better this morning. Sit for one more day. I brought a book for you to read to all of us today. Fiona handed Melody a book. When Melody glanced at it, she was surprised. It wasn't the Bible as she'd suspected it would be. The book was titled Wuthering Heights. This is what you want me to read? Melody asked, looking at it warily. She'd been taught from a young age that reading anything but news or the Bible were not good for women. Henri nodded as she worked on the tiny gown in her hands. I want to hear it. Where did this book come from? Melody asked. Emma laughed. It's my mother's. She told me we should all read it together. Why haven't I met your mother yet, Emma? She seems like a very interesting person. Oh, she is. If you want to have a meal with her, make sure to invite her here though. I didn't know what good cooking was until after I married. Emma shook her head as she swept the floor. Fiona boiled some water to use to scrub the floors. While the others worked on her home, Melody opened the book and began to read. Immediately, she was sucked into the story, and she could see what was happening in her imagination. Frequently, when she looked up, the girls had paused in their work to just listen to the story. She read the first two chapters before she realized how much time had gone by. We should have some lunch, Melody said. The girls all looked at one another and laughed. I think we all forgot we were supposed to be working, Emma said. Let me throw some lunch together, and then we can listen to more after lunch. Fiona frowned. While you make lunch, I'm going to run home and get bandages and ointment. Look at my feet first, Melody suggested. I don't think I need it anymore. Fiona dropped to her knees in front of Melody and carefully unwrapped one of the bandages. She gasped. Oh, you're right, Melody. They look amazing. That's what I tried to tell you. They barely hurt. Fiona bit her lip. One more day of sitting, and we'll let you work tomorrow. Henri can read to us while we work. I don't think we're being idle because we are working while we listen. Melody laughed. Every time I looked up no one was working because they were all too enthralled by the story. We work hard, Emma said. We should all get to read a book now and again. Melody didn't argue. There was no point. 
the girls would do what they wanted to do anyway. When Jacob got home that night, he found his wife setting the table for supper and putting the meal on. You're not supposed to be on your feet so much. Jacob protested. Even Fiona said, my feet look much better. They only had me sit all day, so I could read them a story. He chuckled. That sounds about right. He walked close to her and kissed her cheek. You're really all right? I really am. I promise. Bastian came in late for supper, looking worried. I think the bull is sick, Pa. What makes you think that? Jacob asked. Is it bad enough to get the doctor out here? We don't need to be finding ourselves another bull. I think I should just watch him. All right then. You do what you feel is right. Jacob glanced over at Melody. Who cooked tonight? Fiona. But tomorrow even she has admitted I can start doing what needs to be done for my family. Melody smiled, thrilled she wouldn't have to be treated like an invalid much longer. Well, good. I think you'll be much happier if you can move around and do what needs to be done instead of sitting in a chair reading to other people who are doing their chores. I will be much happier. Melody watched as Bastian got his food. Did you have a good day at work? Bastian shrugged. I got to work with the cattle, and I like to work with cattle. It makes me happy. Good. Do you think you're up for a short walk this evening? Jacob asked Melody. I do. I'm really feeling almost completely better. Can you wear shoes? She frowned, thinking about it. I think I could. Maybe I'll just wear some slippers though. Then they won't rub my feet so badly. Good idea, he said. After she'd finished the dishes, they started out on their walk, and he led her straight to the house he was working on. The family called it the big house, so she was inclined to do the same. Your house is beautiful. Jacob smiled. My Henri helped me with it. She designed the whole kitchen with a cook in mind. As he led her inside, she noted that the house was finished inside, but there was no furniture and the walls were yet to be painted. When he showed her the kitchen she gasped, with delight. Oh, Jacob. Cooking will be delightful in here. There's a real picture window to look out as I wash dishes. And a real stove. Without thinking, she threw her arms around him, thrilled that she was getting exactly what she wanted. He may not have built it for her, but it would be hers anyway. I take it you're happy with it? Oh, yes. I want to plant flowers on either side of the front door, and I want to spend long winter nights here in front of the fireplace. Would it be all right if I invited the whole family for supper right after we move in? There's enough room for everyone here. This house is so big. She followed him up the stairs, to see the three bedrooms there. Why three? she asked. Obviously, he wasn't planning to have more children. He shrugged. I thought it would be nice for the grandchildren to come visit and have a place to stay. You're really looking forward to those grandbabies, aren't you? He grinned. I am. I can't tell you how much. Henri is going to make a good little mother. I'm sure all the girls will. It's been fun getting to know them. They make chores enjoyable. I'm glad. They're all good girls. Will this room be ours? she asked, indicating the largest room there. He nodded. I figure I'll have our local furniture maker make us a huge bed. Then the grandkids can climb in bed with us in the mornings if they want to. I like that idea. Melody couldn't wait for grandbabies either. When they got back to the house, he kept her hand in his, pulling her to the bedroom door. When he started kissing her and stroking her, she had no illusion about where their relationship was going. Right into that bed, apparently. Within minutes, she was completely undressed, and she moved to the bed, spreading her legs slightly, waiting for him to fall on her and get it all over with. 
When he joined her in the middle of the bed, stroking her and his mouth began roaming over her entire body, she gave herself up to the feelings. When he joined himself to her, there was only pleasure, which surprised her. It had always been slightly uncomfortable with Gideon. With Jacob, there was nothing but pleasure. That night she fell asleep with a smile on her lips. Her joy stronger than anything. Asterisk. Jacob was already out doing his chores when she woke the next morning. She dressed carefully, in one of her two-day dresses. She put her hair up in a stylish twist instead of her usual bun. She wanted to look nice for her new husband. It was a desire she hadn't had in a very long time. While she cooked, she hummed to herself, thinking about the huge kitchen that would soon be at her disposal. The idea of living in that beautiful new house, and if she was honest with herself the enjoyable lovemaking from the night before, had put a new spring in her step. Breakfast was on the table before the men came back in from their chores. She didn't know what her day would hold, but she was certain to be doing something with the girls. After breakfast, the kiss Jacob gave her was anything but chaste. He was obviously trying to make up for lost time, and she couldn't blame him. The kissing and holding was wondrous and new. Jacob was just the man to wake her from what felt like a forty-year sleep. When the girls arrived a short while later, Melody told them she wanted to get all non-essentials into crates before the move. Would you mind helping me? I promise, I'm going to reciprocate. No need, Fiona said softly, looking at Henri. Get to reading. We need to know what happens. As the day went on, they learned more and more about Heathcliff and Catherine's volatile relationship while they packed away winter clothes and books, and so many other things. For a man who must have gotten rid of most of his things before starting on the trail, Jacob certainly does have a lot of things. Melody shook her head. Fiona found a box with newsprint wrapping many small things. When they were unwrapped, Melody knew she'd found the collection of woodland animals Jacob had spoken of. She unwrapped a few and was surprised to see how detailed they were. There was a rabbit, a deer, and so many others. Her favorite was a little bear cub looking up at his mother. It brought tears to her eyes it was so beautiful. Jacob came home just before lunchtime to find the girls listening to Henri Red while they packed things. I just wanted to let you all know that we'll have furniture delivered tomorrow, so we should plan to move then. Melody smiled. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jacob. The way she said his name was almost a caress. She had never wanted to be physical with Gideon, but at that moment, if the girls hadn't been there, she would have taken Jacob by the arm and pulled him into their bedroom. By the end of the day, everything they felt they could pack away had been done and Melody had to keep herself from carrying things over to the big house. She'd never seen such a grand home, and oh how she wanted to live there. The idea of waiting even one more day seemed like pure torture. When the girls left for the day, they agreed to meet back at the big house the following morning to help unpack. The men were to be there bright and early to move their belongings. Melody was thankful she only had the one trunk to deal with. They had shepherd's pie for supper, something her aunt had taught her to make during the year she lived with her. It had become her favorite meal, and she was happy to share it with Jacob and Bastion. After supper, Jacob took her for a short walk down to the creek to show her where their water had come from most days. We just finished digging a well, though, and you'll be able to get water from that a lot easier than you can get it from the creek. She was huffing and puffing as they came back up the hill. It's hard to believe I made it up Big Hill just days ago, isn't it? He laughed. I think you're in fine shape, he said. She smiled at him, not even a little shy with the man after their night together. Well, I'm glad you think so. Tomorrow is going to be a long day, but I think you ladies will enjoy unpacking and setting things about. We painted the walls today, and that was the last thing we needed to do before the furniture arrived. I hope you'll like what I've chosen. Oh, I'm certain I will. You don't mind if I make curtains and a tablecloth? Not at all. You girls should feel free to decorate while we men work. 
I'm glad Henri is spending all her time with you. Then we know if she's in labor someone can fetch Mrs. Mitchell. Will she not have the doctor with her? Melody asked. The doctor will be standing by, ready to come up the hill, if needed. Roy is to get Mrs. Mitchell and stop at the doctor's on the way to let him know there's about to be a birth. We really like the doctor a great deal. Oh, that's good. I suppose you have everything ready then. One of us can go straight down to get Roy as soon as she's in labor. Melody felt safe with the plans they'd made. The baby was to be her grandchild, after all. Chapter 7 Move Day took everything Melody had in her. It wasn't her feet, but it was deciding where to put everything. Even with the girls, there was a lot of work to be done. When they finished the big house, Melody and the girls went back to the cabin to clean where furniture had been before, and to move all of Bastion's belongings into the bedroom from the loft. Henri read to them the whole while, but it was obvious to Melody that she was itching to get up and help. It was shortly before supper time when the girls left, and Melody went to the big house alone for the first time. She looked around her beautiful new kitchen, thinking she wanted curtains in a sunny yellow. Then she found the food they'd brought over from the cabin and she made a meal. There was no fresh bread, which she hated, but she was still able to cook a meal she knew Jacob and Bastion would like. She had no idea whether Bastion planned to eat with them that night, but she would make enough for him to join if he wanted to. The following day, they were going to work on the garden and harvest all they could. Melody looked forward to getting her hands dirty as she dug for potatoes and pulled carrots. She truly loved to garden more than anything else. When Jacob came into the house at the end of the day, he was alone. Is Bastion coming? Melody asked. Bastion decided to have supper with Emma and Jared. He said he's going to spread the Bastion around. Melody laughed. I think he'll be much happier spending time with people his own age than us. Jacob walked to her and wrapped his arms around her. And to be honest, I'm happy to spend my time alone with you. She rested her head on his shoulder and sighed, contentedly. She may not love this man yet, but she felt it coming. He'd turned her life around and she was incredibly grateful to have found him. After supper, they sat together with her working on the hat and booties for the baby, and him working on his woodland critter. Do you know what you're making yet? He shook his head. No, it hasn't told me. I found your box of animals yesterday. Would you mind if I displayed them? I won't if it would bother you. A slight smile crossed his face. If you like them, then I think they should be displayed. If you don't, then we'll just keep them in the box. Oh, I absolutely adore them. Thank you. Jacob felt both happy and sad that she loved the animals he'd made for his first wife. It was getting harder and harder to think about his children's mother as he spent time with Melody. You've done a good job with the house, he said. Are you planning to do anything else? She laughed. As soon as I finish this project, I plan to make curtains for the kitchen and a tablecloth to match. Then I'll make curtains for the dining room and parlor. This house is so grand, it's going to take me a year to get all that I want to do done for it. I also want to make quilts for each bed. It's a good thing the girls were part of the package when I married you. I'm glad you get along with them all so well. Henri has missed having her mother around so much, but she seems more content now that you're here. I know she hates that she couldn't share her baby with her mother. Melody frowned. I know I can't be a mother to her, but I will be a good grandmother to her children. She looked out the window and saw that it was already dark. I think I'm going to go get ready for bed. He grinned. I'll be there in a few minutes. Asterisk. The day in the garden was just what Melody needed. She sat right on the ground and used a spade to dig up potatoes. Henri refused to be excluded from the harvest. She'd helped with the planting and some of the weeding. She wouldn't miss out on harvesting the crops they'd so carefully cultivated. 
Are we going to put up whatever we harvest today in the next day or two? Melody asked, thinking what a huge job it would be. There were so many different vegetables in the garden, she had no doubt it would be a good winter for them. Yes, Fiona said. We'll split between families evenly with anything left over going to the pastor and his wife. Hannah's been too busy with that new baby of hers to get any real gardening done. I can understand that, Melody said. It's the community's job to care for the pastor and his wife anyway. Emma nodded. I'm excited that we have such a fine bounty. It's going to be fun to look out for others this year. What do you mean? Melody asked. During the winter months, we will visit with the elderly and take them a cake or a pie. Or we'll make meals for those we know are facing hardship. Or just go over and watch someone's children so she can get some chores done. Pastor Jed started it last fall when we were all trying to settle in and scared about whether we'd have enough food for the winter to come. That's really nice. I want to be part of it. Oh, good. The new school teacher is my first project, Emma said. The men built her a teacherage as soon as she said she'd stay, but she has no family left. She lost both of her parents over the winter. I think she's going to need some company at times. That makes sense. Maybe we have her over for lunch every Saturday, and we can all eat in my new dining room. That would make me so happy. Melody looked forward to entertaining in her beautiful new home. That could be a lot of fun, Fiona grinned. I'm glad I don't have to try to find friends. I have three of my favorite people to spend time with every day. While Fiona and Melody were fixing a cold lunch for them to eat outside, Emma came barreling into Fiona's cabin. Go get Mrs. Mitchell. The baby's coming. Fiona didn't need to be asked twice. She dropped the tomato she was cutting up for their sandwiches and ran to hitch up the wagon. Melody finished fixing lunch for them all. First babies were never quick to make an appearance. She carried their lunch to the cabin, meeting Mrs. Mitchell on the way in. I helped birth a lot of babies on the trail, but I'm not a midwife. Mrs. Mitchell nodded. If you want to help, I'd be happy to have another set of hands. The labor took hours. Emma left to make a meal for the men, but returned immediately. Mrs. Mitchell was a no-nonsense woman who took charge of the situation, barking out orders to anyone there. Just after midnight that night, Melody helped ease her first grandbaby into the world, determined to love her with all her heart. She washed the baby while Mrs. Mitchell tended to Henri. It was a little girl, and Melody's heart was immediately stolen. This was a child who she would have a real connection with. A child who would always be in her life. What more could a woman ask for? The baby was named Nellie Norma, after the women who had given her parents life. When she stepped outside, she could see the men gathered around. Let's go home, Grandpa, Melody said to Jacob. She would wait until they were out of earshot to tell him he had a granddaughter. One she would share with him. Asterisk. They finished the harvest without Henri, using Melody's kitchen, to put up the vegetables. Each day one of them would sit with Henri, helping her with the baby and other chores until she was ready to do it all on her own. Melody loved her time with Henri and little Nellie. The baby was a joy to be around, and Melody tried to memorize each minute they had together while she was this small. Can I get you anything? she asked, while Henri fed her daughter. Maybe some milk. I'm afraid I won't make enough. She seems to always be hungry. Henri stared lovingly into her daughter's eyes while nursing her. I'll get the milk. Do you want lunch soon? I would. Thank you, Melody. You've been a real blessing. I'm certain your mother-in-law would be here if I wasn't. She loves that baby as much as we do. Henri smiled. I was a little nervous when Pa first married you. I wasn't sure that you were going to be the kind of woman who would open her heart to your husband's children. I was wrong to be nervous though. I feel like if my ma were here, she'd give her blessing to your marriage with Pa. You make him happy, 
and that's plain for all to see. Thank you, Melody said with tears in her eyes. I already love you. And this entire family. I wasn't sure if it would come naturally, but it has. What a wonderful family for me to marry into. I like that. I think it's time for me to be on my own with the baby after today, though. You and the others have devoted all your time to helping me, and the harvest needs to be put up. And the men need to start hunting soon. I feel well enough to take care of Nellie and cook meals now. Are you sure? Melody asked. Henri nodded, smiling sweetly. I'm sure. I won't be as much help as I could be this year, so I can't keep you from helping. All right. But if you realize you're doing too much too soon, I want you to let me know. We're handling the harvest well. Just think. In another month, we'll have all the food we need for the winter. Pa said he's going to butcher a few steers, so we'll even have beef through the winter. I think we're going to thrive here. And I will as well. Melody fixed them a light lunch, and once the baby was asleep, they ate it at the table together. I have loved every minute of taking care of you and Nellie. Thank you for letting me be part of it. I couldn't have done it without you. Asterisk. Melody and the girls finished getting the entire harvest put up the day before the first snow of the year. This snow is so early. She said. The other two shook their heads. We get a lot of snow here. Don't worry though. Pa made a sleigh we all share through the winter, Emma told her. It's so much fun gliding over the snow that way. Will the men still be able to get the meat we need? Melody asked, worried about the winter. Oh, yes. Fiona told her. We don't have to hurry quite so much with putting up the meat when it's already frozen outside. All right. Bring on the snow then. Emma grinned. My brother Roy is the best hunter of all of us. Soon, he'll just start showing up at random times with a buck or a rabbit. He usually goes for large game. Last year we ended up with more than we needed for the winter. I'm not going to worry then. Don't. Emma said. Besides, Pa said he'd butcher a few steers as well. We are going to be more than ready for winter. Oh, I have so many inside projects I want to do this winter. But I'll certainly miss spending so much time with you girls. Why? Fiona asked. We'll keep spending time together. Emma and I can walk here easily, and Roy will bring Henri and the baby up the hill. You probably need to get a cradle for her though. I'll talk to Jacob about it. Oh, I'm glad we're going to include each other in our winter plans. Me too. Emma said. I think I'd feel very lonely without my family at my side. Do your mother or sisters ever join you? Melody asked. She'd felt badly for not inviting Emma's sisters and mother to join them. They did all the time last year, Emma said. Then the girls started school, and Ma said she was enjoying her time alone too much to keep joining us. Melody smiled. After so many years of being alone, she was happy to have other women nearby. The work was so much easier with good company. I'm going to talk to Jacob about making one of the rooms upstairs into a nursery. Then we can be certain Nellie will have a place to sleep here. It feels strange not including Henri in all we're doing right now, but I do agree that she should stay home and get used to the duties of being a mother. Henri really does need the time alone with the baby, Emma said. Ma told me every time she had a baby, she'd send her older children to stay with Pa's parents because she needed that time alone with each of us to fall in love with her babies. Ma's a terrible cook, but she's a good mother. Is her cooking really that bad? Melody asked. She'd heard several people say how bad it was now. Yes. Emma and Fiona said together. Now I want to go to her house for a meal, just to try her cooking. Emma laughed. Oh, it wouldn't work. Ma has a deal with Henri and me. If she invites people over, one of us will cook for them. 
She doesn't think she should have to go through the embarrassment of people knowing she can't cook worth a lick. Her sewing is amazing though. She taught all three of us girls to love to sew. I'm almost done with a little gown I made for the baby, Emma said. I'm knitting lace for the collar and cuffs on the sleeves. It will be nice to have Nellie looking so pretty for church on Sundays. Nellie would look beautiful if she went naked to church on Sundays, Melody said. They all laughed. That would certainly be messy, Fiona said. I'm sure even Pastor Jed, who doesn't get ruffled by many things, wouldn't think a naked baby in church is a good idea, Emma said, grinning. Melody removed the jars and the canning pot and set them on the work table. That's the last of it. We have no more vegetables to put up. We'll have to tell the men it's time to go hunting then, Emma said. Good job, ladies. Chapter 8 October was a month of preparing for winter. The men all took turns hunting and came back with whatever they'd killed for the women to deal with. Toward the end of the month, to her surprise, Melody could no longer cut the meat off the carcasses. She vomited each time she tried and finally went to sit in the kitchen. All her life she'd dealt with fresh meat and not being able to was very strange for her. It was like her entire body had changed overnight. Fiona worried the most about her. She sat with her at the table after the third time she lost her lunch to talk to her about what was wrong. Perhaps you have a stomach flu. Melody shook her head. No, I feel fine most of the time. It's just when I have to touch the bloody meat, Melody got up and ran for a place to vomit. Just thinking about it was turning her stomach now. I'm taking you to the doctor, Fiona said once she was back. There is something wrong, and we need to get to the bottom of it. We can't take time in the middle of butchering an elk to go to the doctor. Oh, yes we can. Emma, if you need help, get your mother or your sisters. We'll be back as soon as we can. With that, Fiona left the house and went to hitch up the wagon. There were only a few inches of snow on the ground, but it was cold enough Melody had no desire to be out in the weather. She had to be when they were working on the meat, but it was only for a minute or two at a time, and the house was toasty warm. On the drive, Fiona kept glancing at Melody to make sure she wasn't falling out of the wagon. You're pale. I just know there's something wrong. Thirty minutes later, Melody walked out of the doctor's house. She was shocked at what she'd heard the doctor say. She'd even argued with him until she was blue in the face. He said she was pregnant, but she knew she was barren. She climbed into the wagon beside Fiona, who was watching her carefully. Oh, he said it's something bad, didn't he? Melody shook her head. She wouldn't tell a soul before she told Jacob. He had four grown children and a grandchild, and he was going to have a fifth child. What man would want a baby in those circumstances? You're starting to really scare me, Melody. We all love you, and I'd hate to see something happen to you. Melody's mind was dwelling on what to tell Jacob, and she didn't think she should tell the girl. Tomorrow. We'll all talk tomorrow. Through her shock, Melody noted the beautiful color of fall in Bear Lake. The trees were all changing colors, and she would soon change too. She would get round as fall and winter passed, most likely giving birth in late summer. Her life would be so different with an infant. It wasn't simply that she thought she was barren, she'd believed she was too old to have a baby. And here she was, learning that she was expecting for the first time in her life. Most of the work on the elk was done by the time they walked in the door. The doctor doesn't want me dealing with the fresh meat any longer. I can do other parts of the processing, but I can't cut the meat off the carcasses. He said it was a very bad idea to keep doing so. Melody told the others the truth as far as it went. How on earth was she supposed to tell Jacob? When they were finished for the day, the girls helped her clean the kitchen and left, promising to be back the following day. While she made supper, she thought about what it would be like to have a baby of her own. She could hold and nurse the baby and never have to give it back. 
The idea of a child that would forever be hers, well, it seemed as wonderful as it did crazy. She fixed a special meal that night. Jacob had butchered a hog, so she made pork chops with fried potatoes and carrots on the side. She hoped Jacob would be pleased with the meal, so she could find a way to tell him they were going to have a baby. Jacob came inside to kiss her cheek. Supper smells amazing, he said. She smiled. I hope it tastes as good as it smells. How was your day, he asked. She thought about telling him then. She really did. But instead she said, oh, we got the elk taken care of. There will be plenty of meat for the winter. Glad to hear it. She put their supper on the table and added an extra plate to the table when Bastion walked in. So much for telling Jacob during supper. Bastion talked animatedly through the whole meal. I'm glad I was wrong about the bull being sick. We need to make sure to keep him out of the pasture with the cows though, because they are all already calving. And that bull doesn't seem to know when to quit. He shook his head, continuing his talk about the bull. Melody was mostly quiet, still wondering how to tell Jacob she was expecting. Watching him with Bastion, she was certain he loved his children more than anything. But did he love them enough that he wanted more at his age? That's the only thing she was unsure about. After supper, Bastion stayed and talked to Jacob while she did the dishes and she washed as slowly as she could, waiting for him to be done. Once all the dishes were wiped and put up, and her kitchen was in its usual pristine condition, she went up the stairs to get ready for bed. Normally she enjoyed Bastion's visits, but there was just too much on her mind for her to listen to him talk as much as he was. She slipped into bed, not certain she'd be able to sleep, but not wanting to stay awake anymore either. She was actually scared of her sweet, gentle husband, and how he would react to her news, which was silly because he'd never even given her a look that would frighten her. He was a good man. When Jacob joined her a short while later, he pulled her close. Is everything all right? You were very quiet tonight. I have something I need to tell you, and I don't want you to get angry about it. Why would I get angry? Were you making eyes at some other man or something? Nothing like that, but I did see a man today. Dr. Bentley. Jacob was surprised. The doctor? Are you sick? No, I thought I was sick, but instead, I'm expecting. Jacob said nothing for a full minute. You said you were barren. I thought I was. She said a silent prayer that he wouldn't be angry. Melody, I've raised my children. They're all grown. I'm a grandfather. I know. Melody felt tears drifting down her cheeks. I didn't think this could happen, but now that it has, I can't be upset. I've wanted a baby for so long. I thought I was barren. I thought I was too old to have a baby. I was ready to be content to be a grandmother, but it didn't work out that way. We'll have a baby in the summer. Jacob rolled away from her onto his back, staring up at the ceiling. I'm not sure I want to be a father again. I understand. But she didn't. To her, finding out she was expecting the child she never thought she could have was a wondrous thing. She would love the child within her with all her heart and all her soul. She loved Jacob as well, though she hadn't realized it until that moment. It was a long while before either of them fell asleep. She understood why he didn't necessarily want a baby at his age, but she wasn't sure he understood why it was what she wanted with everything inside her. The following morning was no better. Jacob had little to say to her, and she hoped he would slowly come to understand how she felt and warm up to the idea of having another child. If he didn't, she had no idea what she'd do. Divorce wasn't something she could even think about. After he'd left for the day without the kiss he usually bestowed on her cheek, she washed the dishes, but she didn't look out to see the beauty that was the valley she lived in. Instead, she did her chores and felt numb inside. The man she loved didn't want the child she carried. When Fiona and Emma arrived, they had Henri and the baby with them. 
The girls all delighted over the baby and how red her cheeks were from the cold. Melody tried not to look at the child, because it would just make her yearn for her child and her husband's love. After a short while, Melody realized everyone was looking at her. She was normally right there wherever the baby was. What did the doctor say? Fiona asked. You said you'd tell me today. Melody took a deep breath and the tears started. In less than a minute she was sobbing, not sure what she was supposed to do, and not sure if she should tell the others. Not until Jacob made peace with the situation. Emma hurried to her and hugged her close. Oh, it can't be that bad. It's the best news I've ever gotten in my life, Melody choked out between sobs. I'm expecting, and we always thought I was barren. Fiona squealed with excitement and hugged her tightly. Emma smiled and patted her happily. Only Henri seemed to understand. You're going to have a child, my brother or sister, who will be younger than my baby. Melody nodded, plopping herself down at the table across from Henri. I've wanted a baby for so long, but your pa, well, he's made it clear that he's already raised his children. He doesn't want more, but I desperately want this baby. He's barely spoken to me since I told him. Finally understanding, Emma and Fiona joined them at the table. He doesn't want it? Emma asked. But he's such a good father. He's a lot older now, Henri said. He thought he was done raising children. Melody nodded, getting her sobs under control. It seemed that everyone was starting to understand. I don't know if he's going to ever be all right with the baby, and I don't think I could ever be all right without it. That's a fine pickle you're in, Emma said, sighing loudly. Did he forget how babies were made? I know you didn't just get pregnant on your own. Fiona started giggling at that. I'm sorry. He just has four children. He knows how they're made. When the others didn't share her mirth, Fiona stopped. We're here for you always. I'm sure if it comes to that, Bastion would move in with Pa, and you could move into the cabin. Maybe, Melody said. But the truth was, she didn't want to live apart from Jacob. She loved him, and she enjoyed every minute of their time together. He was very good to her. The door opened, and Jared was there. I just shot a buck. He looked between the women, confused, but he didn't say anything. We'll take care of it, Emma called. Melody hoped he didn't tell his father she'd been crying. That was the last thing she wanted Jacob to know. So you can't cut the meat, Henri said. Why don't you sit with the baby, and I'll do your share of the preserving? Oh, you don't have to do that. Melody said. Oh, but I want to. Besides, you need the practice. Melody realized that Henri had yet to say anything about the pregnancy, but she was obviously going to support her through it. That was really all Melody needed. Someone to lean on through the next eight months. She looked down into Nellie's sleeping face, and she knew that no matter what it took. She wanted the child she carried, and no one would be able to convince her it was a bad idea. Why, God had provided a miracle, and if Jacob couldn't see that, then perhaps he wasn't a man of God as he said. She refused to do penance for something that had been out of her control, and she looked forward to every moment of raising her child. Each of the girls hugged her as they left at the end of the day, showing silent support of the situation she found herself in. Melody stood tall, hugging them each and thanking them for being on her side. While she made supper, a roast from one of the butchered steers, she decided she wouldn't be quiet about it. She would talk to him about the baby and about turning one of the upstairs bedrooms into a nursery. She was going to enjoy every minute of expecting the child within her. No matter what Jacob said or did. Jacob walked into the house at the end of the day, worried that he had no words to say. He didn't have a right to be angry with her, because he'd had as much a part in making the baby as she did. He didn't greet her with the usual kiss, instead going into the kitchen and calmly washing his hands. You feeling all right? Melody nodded. 
I really only get sick when I touch the meat with blood dripping off it, so I'm watching the baby while the girls put up the meat. He remembered how hard the first few months had always been on Nelly, and he started to say something, but he didn't know what to say. He'd just married her, and just realized he loved her, and she was already expecting. It was too soon. Much too soon. Melody pretended he was acting normally, and she set the table for them. Do you know if Bastion is coming tonight? Jacob shook his head. No, he's going to eat with Sam and Fiona. He said that Fiona makes the best beef pot pies in the whole world. Do you like pot pies as much as Bastion does? she asked. They've always been a favorite. Nellie made them at least once a week. Sometimes chicken, sometimes beef, always delicious. I'll get Fiona's receipt then. I'll happily make you pot pies. Anything to keep him happy while he was grappling with the idea of their baby. Chapter 9 The winter was just as cold as they thought it would be, but all their preparations paid off. By late spring, Melody was as big as a house. She and Jacob were getting along well again but he had never expressed any excitement over the baby. When it was time to plant their garden, the girls told her to sit and watch, taking care of the baby, who was crawling everywhere. Melody shook her head. No, I love to play with the baby, as you all know, but I want to spend some time digging in the dirt. It's cathartic. So they all watched the baby while they planted their garden. We need to plant some raspberry bushes, Melody said as she looked around. They'd give us raspberries every year. I have a receipt for the most delicious raspberry muffins. Wait till you taste huckleberries, Henri said. They grow in the mountains around here, so we'll take a day, go up into the forest at the top of those mountains over there, and we'll spend the whole afternoon picking huckleberries. I'm not sure how many mountains I'm going to be climbing this summer. Melody said, patting her huge belly. I won't be able to climb either. Not this summer. Fiona said. Are you expecting as well? Emma asked. At Fiona's nod, she continued. Why didn't you tell us? Fiona shrugged. I just found out a couple of weeks ago. Sam and I have been enjoying our little secret, but since I'll be showing before too long. Well, I hope all these babies become good friends, Melody said with a smile. Their aunt or uncle will need friends. Are you still doing well? Emma asked. Melody nodded. I am. The doctor is seeing me more than he usually would because of my age, but as far as he can tell the baby is fine. Henri smiled at that. Good. It'll be nice not to be the youngest anymore. How's Pa acting about it? Melody shrugged. He's still not exactly happy about the baby, but he doesn't seem angry about it either. Melody climbed to her feet after finishing an entire row of carrots, looking at herself and laughing. I think I'm wearing enough dirt for now. She walked toward the quilt where the baby was sleeping. They'd discovered putting her on a quilt was magic. She didn't like how the grass felt, so she didn't leave the quilt. As she was walking, she tripped over a clump of dirt, gasping as she fell, turning herself so her belly wouldn't take the brunt of her weight. That hurt. The others surrounded her. Are you all right? Emma asked. I think so. I just tripped. I'll run and get Pa, Henri said. Don't bother him. I'm fine. Melody sat up with the help of Emma and Fiona, gasping in pain. My ankle. Fiona looked at her ankle, while Henri ran for Jacob. She obviously didn't believe Melody was all right. Fiona frowned at what she saw. Melody's right foot was twisted sideways. Stay with her, Fiona told Emma. I'm going to hitch up the wagon. She needs to go to the doctor. That ankle is broken. It might be better to have the doctor come here, Emma said. Either way, I need to hitch up the wagon. Emma frowned at Melody. Why did you do that? Now you won't be able to help us in the garden. Melody sighed. 
I assure you, it wasn't intentional. It's bad enough being pregnant all summer. Now I won't be able to walk, to feel the cool breeze. I hope you didn't hurt the baby, Emma said softly. Oh, I really don't think I did. Otherwise, I'd be rolling down that hill, to get to the doctor. We wouldn't be waiting for Jacob or a wagon. Melody felt foolish sitting on the ground, covered in dirt. Help me to the house. I don't want to go to the doctor with this much dirt all over me. Emma shook her head. I will not. You're staying right there at least until Pa gets here. Jacob came running around the corner of the house. Are you hurt? Will you be okay? Did you hurt the baby? I'm hurt. I think my ankle is broken. I don't think I hurt the baby. The girls are insisting I see the doctor. Jacob nodded, worry covering his face. I will drive you. He scooped her up into his arms, as if he was a man half his age, carrying her to the wagon, which Fiona had finished hitching. He set her carefully on the seat before climbing up himself and taking the leads. Would you like me to come? Fiona asked. Jacob didn't bother to respond as he began the drive down the hill to the doctor. How did you do this? He finally asked, watching her face as she flinched in pain. She knew he was trying to distract her, but she desperately needed to be distracted. I was helping in the garden, and when I stood up to go sit with Nellie on the quilt, I tripped over a clump of dirt and fell. I made sure to land on my side and not on my belly. I'm much more worried about you than I am the baby. Deep in his heart, he wasn't sure if that was true. He loved Melody, but he wouldn't be able to bear it if she had to go through the sadness of losing her baby. He knew it would tear her apart. At the doctor's house, he carried her to the door, and knocked, loudly. Dr. Bentley opened the door, saw them, and opened it wide so Jacob could carry his wife inside. She fell and her ankle appears to be broken. Put her on the table, the doctor said, indicating his examination table. I'll check her ankle, but I also need to be sure she didn't harm herself or the baby in any other way. Do you want to wait in the parlor? The doctor's house doubled as his office. No, I want to be here with my wife. When it was time to set Melody's ankle, Jacob held her under her shoulders while the doctor pulled. Her whimper made him feel like the worst man alive. He never would have allowed Nellie to garden while she was expecting. Why hadn't he been more careful with Melody? Your ankle should be healed by the time the baby is born. I hope you'll have help until then. Yes, my daughters will all help. Melody loved the way he included his daughters-in-law in with his daughter, as if there was no distinction between them. Melody nodded. They are wonderful. Good. Now, if you'll step out of the room, Jacob, I need to do a personal exam. She is carrying my baby, doctor. I think it will be just fine if I see her unclothed. Melody hid a smile. It was really the first time Jacob had referred to the baby as his own. It was definitely a step in the right direction. While the doctor did the exam, Jacob held her hand, trying to assure her. The baby will be fine. They are strong. The doctor finished his exam and smiled. Jacob is right. You are doing fine. Jacob, you should make her two crutches, so she can get around some. We want her to be strong enough to give birth in a couple of months, so she needs to be able to move around some. I would make sure she had a bed on the first floor, even if you have to turn your dining room into a bedroom. Jacob nodded. I will make the crutches tonight. Good. No weight on that ankle. If you have any spotting, I want you to come to me right away, but I think you and the baby will be just fine. Thank you, Melody said, relieved that the baby would be all right. Instead of taking her directly home, Jacob took her to Fiona's cabin and deposited her on the bed. Once we turn our house upside down, I will come back for you. Fiona and Emma both hurried into the cabin to check on her. What did the doctor say? 
I didn't hurt the baby, but I did break my ankle. I'm going to need help again. Of course, you will. Emma said. We've already been talking about it. Did the doctor say you needed to stay in bed, or can you sit up? He wants me to do whatever I can do without putting weight on my ankle. The men are at our house turning my dining room into a bedroom for me. Melody shook her head. He listened to every word the doctor said, and I have a feeling he won't let me do one thing differently. And he's sure the baby is all right? Emma asked. He said to watch for spotting and to see him immediately if that happens, but he thinks I'll be fine. Melody said a silent prayer of thanks that her baby was going to be fine. After so long, there was no way she could lose that baby. When Jacob came for her, Jared offered to carry her, and Jacob glared at his oldest son. She's my wife, and I will carry her. He picked her up, carrying her to the big house and into the dining room where their bed had been put. They would have had to take it apart and reassemble it, but he obviously didn't care. In that moment, she felt more cherished than she had in a long time. While she lay in the bed, Jacob moved a small table to her side of the bed. You can put drinks there. You will stay in the bed unless I get you out of it. Do you understand? Melody nodded. I'll do my best. He narrowed his eyes. You will simply do as you are told. Finally, she nodded. Emma and Fiona had followed her there. We're going to make supper and get you as comfortable as you can be. Emma propped pillows behind her head so she could sit up, while Fiona started supper. I guess I won't be able to help in the garden like I wanted, Melody said frowning. She was feeling just a little bit sorry for herself. I won't even be able to go outside with you. Do you think Pa will carry you out to your rocking chair? Then you could at least watch us, Emma said. Oh, we could finish Wuthering Heights. Melody laughed. I may be able to do that in a few days. Doc wants me to have my foot propped all the time for the first three days. Then we'll open your window, and you can watch us and yell out what we're doing wrong. Emma winked at Melody. I would never. No, but you could read very loudly. Fiona called from the kitchen. I could do that, Melody said, thankful the girls were trying to find ways to include her even after she'd hurt herself. When supper was finished, Emma pulled a chair to Melody's bedside. Fiona is going to cook supper and have Jared and I over, so I can stay with you until Jacob is back for the day. Thank you, Melody said softly. The doctor gave me some medicine, and it's making me sleepy. Sleep then. I'll just sit here and read ahead on Wuthering Heights. You will not. All of us read it or none of us read it. That's a silly rule, Emma said. But it's one we made together the day we started the book. Emma sighed. All right. I won't read it. Here, I'll sing you a lullaby. As soon as Emma started singing, Melody wanted to beg her to read the book instead, but they'd all agreed, and she could handle Emma's singing. If she had to. When Melody woke a while later, Jacob was home. He brought her supper, and ate his own sitting in the bed alongside her. You can eat at the kitchen table if you want, Melody said. I could, but I'd rather sit here with you. Tell me what you did today, then. You already know what I did. I do. There were several calves birthed this morning. Only one needed help. Bastion hurried around like a proud father, talking to each of the calves. It's funny just how connected to them he feels. Melody could picture Bastion doing just that. It made her smile just to think about. That sounds like Bastion. Two of the hogs had piglets today. The day was all about birthing I guess I should say. It sounds like it. How many piglets? Eighteen total. We'll sell a couple of the males in the fall and butcher a few more. I think we'll have enough meat that we can sell some of it. Melody smiled, shaking her head. You certainly have a talent for making money. Jacob grinned. 
always have. When other boys were playing games, I was asking all the people in town if I could do odd jobs. I saved every penny I made too. I was a farmer back east, but I always wanted to own a huge ranching operation. The prices were just too high, so I decided to come west with my boys. You certainly have a huge ranch here. I like that you work with your boys the way you do. I'm sure they enjoy it as well. Do you think you'll need to take on ranch hands anytime soon? I do. I think we'll need to do it by roundup. We have just too many calves to work on our own this year. I'm really looking forward to finding some help. We'll be selling a few of the calves to anyone who wants them. The rest will either add to the herd or fatten up to sell in the fall. We'll have to drive the cattle to market this year. I'll send the boys though. I wouldn't want to be gone when the baby is born. The baby is going to be here in July, she said, smiling slightly. She couldn't believe he was unsure of her due date after all this time. Well, then I'll be here to help around the ranch. I've already told the boys two of them are going, and they can choose which two. Bastion will go because he has no family to leave behind. I'm not sure who it will be between Sam and Jared. Jared, Melody said with a smile. Fiona is expecting. I didn't know that. How long have they known? Fiona said they were keeping it to themselves for a few weeks, but she told us today. We'll have another grandbaby. Jacob smiled. Another grandchild to play with our child. Marrying you turned my whole world upside down. Chapter 10 During her convalescence, Jacob was at her side as often as possible. He let the boys do the majority of the work, while he took care of Melody. At the beginning of July, he carried her up the stairs to show her something. One of the spare rooms had been converted into a nursery. There was a cradle she could tell he'd made himself. There was a small quilt hanging off one side of the cradle. Who made this? she asked, picking it up and holding it to her face, as she balanced on one foot. I paid one of the ladies in town to do it. I hope you like it. I love it all. She turned and threw her arms around him, laughing when they were still a full foot apart due to the baby she was carrying. I'm glad. I've been working on this surprise for a while. Thank you so much for thinking to do something so special. She could see a dresser there in the room. What's in that? she asked. Lots of diapers. Got some white cotton from the store and the girls cut it to make diapers. There are little gowns in there that different people in town sewed for a small fee. Should be everything we need for the baby. At least for a while. Oh, and one other thing that's not up here. He scooped her up and carried her down the stairs and to the front door. He set her down right outside the front door, and she looked around, spotting a baby carriage. Where did this come from? You didn't make it. He shook his head. No, I had Herbert Jensen order it for me. It took a while to get here, but I thought you'd want to use it. I bought one for Henri while I was at it. With as often as all you girls are outside, it should be nice for both of you to have one. I didn't order one for Fiona because I didn't know she was expecting when I ordered the other two. I'm sure I can share with her. Melody leaned against him, holding her hurt ankle in the air. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's the least I could do after acting like a heel when you told me you were expecting. I should have apologized long ago, but I didn't think words could ever be enough. He took a deep breath. I love my children with everything inside me, and I've been looking forward to grandchildren for years. I never expected to have any more children of my own though. Of course not. Your youngest is almost twenty now. He nodded. But even though I didn't expect to have more, it doesn't make our baby any less important. You've never had a child, and every woman deserves children. I know you were accepting mine as your own, and loving the grandbaby, but you spent your whole life thinking you couldn't have a baby, and when it happened for you, I should have treated it like the miracle it is. 
not like it was something you did wrong. He scooped her up and carried her back inside, putting her in her favorite chair. Will you forgive me? I was never angry with you. I understood. I played through all the ways you could feel in my head before I told you about the baby. I was worried you wouldn't want me around anymore. Of course, I do. I love you. The words were simple, but they were exactly what she needed to hear. I love you too, Jacob. He leaned down to kiss her. I'm going to be awfully glad when you can walk again. She laughed. I will too. I'm so tired of being stuck wherever you put me. The crutches help, of course, but they hurt my arms. I worry that using them too much will hurt the baby, which doesn't make any sense at all, but it doesn't stop the worries. He chuckled. I'm glad you came along when you did. I can't imagine life without you anymore. You took me in when I was at the lowest point in my life, but that's not why I love you. I love you for how gentle and tender you are with me. For the special looks you share with each of your children. Or the joy on your face when you found out you had a granddaughter. There are so many things I love about you, I can't even count them all. I promise that I'm going to be just as devoted a father as I was with my first four. And if you get pregnant again, I'll know it's another miracle from God. Finally, Melody felt content with the world. Epilogue Melody sat in her bed, which was still in the middle of the dining room for some reason, holding her newborn daughter. From the moment she'd learned she was expecting, she'd prayed the baby would be a girl. She'd have loved a boy just as much, but the idea of a girl caught hold of her, and she couldn't imagine anything else. Jacob walked into the room, looking down at the child. Doc wouldn't tell me if it was a boy or a girl. It's a girl. What should we call her? She'd had dozens of names picked out, and she'd forgotten every one of them when she'd looked into her child's face. How would you feel about Angela? Because she's our little miracle. Our angel. I think that's perfect. Jacob carefully sat on the bed beside her. Are you feeling all right? Melody smiled, nodding. Never in my life have I dreamed of having such a perfect moment. Sitting with the man I love, holding the child that I've always wanted. Thank you, Jacob, for giving me such a wonderful life. Thank you for my little girl.